Hello everyone and welcome to the Esoteric Software Stream. My name is Erika and today we are going to be rigging a painting. I know it has been requested for some time and the last time that I did this I had a very sore throat. So this time we're gonna repeat this. It's gonna be uh, more advanced than the previous one which was Meshes Basics. This is the painting that we're going to be rigging today. We have actually two options. There's uh, the lady that is standing and uh, the old man uh, that is looking at another painting or maybe his own reflection. We don't know. They are rather small compared to the frame. I did not separate the eyes, but I indeed separated at least them <laughs> from the background. Yeah, look at this, look at this Photoshop job. And just the front arm here. I will show you the basics, um, how to set a simple rig for something like this. The most interesting part of this painting I think it's going to be the vertex placement for two different characters. So I could also just do both at the same time. I got this image from Europeana. The name of this painting is Virgin Gottfried, Mr. Constantine and Mrs. Peregrine and start is just because this is a starting file which I just divided literally. We only have these very few images uh, background, hand, man and woman. When we deal with this sort of characters that you want to be able to move in 2.5D matter, to be able to open and close the eyes, I know that it, they are all one piece so it's gonna be a, a little bit more difficult, uh, but perhaps you may want to do that and um, maybe you want them to smile, change expression etc. Then uh, I recommend to start by rigging at first the expressions uh, so the um, features of the face and then afterwards add the 2.5D effect because otherwise as you may have learned from my previous uh, attempt at doing this you may make it harder for yourself. Okay, let's begin by placing the bones. Now, when we have something that is just a painting, like in this case, so the characters are not actually gonna move from the chair or uh, go running around uh, the room and stuff like that, we don't need to rig the rest of this, but we can directly start from their torso to have a little bit of movement. Make sure to be in setup mode, select the create tool. Let's start by selecting the root as the parent bone. And then I'm going to start by rigging at first the woman and then the man. I'll create the first bone, let's select. Okay, selecting this image here. And then I'll just continue creating the rest. So I already have some of the parts of this named. Okay, I will start more or less from the middle of this here, maybe like this, because she is leaning in that direction. From here, I can already create the bones on the face. So that will be the neck, head. Then I'm gonna have a control in the middle of the eyes. That will be the face holder. Uh, then I'm going to add another bone on the tip of the nose, which is going to be the face control, which we are going to use to control the rotation of the face, and another one in the back, maybe here, to also control the back of the face. Then I reselect this one. I'm going to create a bone in the middle for the lips, and then one on each side. Then on the eyes, I'm going to start from the external part inwards, so from here inwards, one end to the other, and the same on the opposite side. Then for the eyes, if you separated your parts well, you may also have a bone for the pupils. In this case we don't, so I'm just gonna keep it uh, with just two controls to make the eyelids open and close. Null bones, so just clicking like this, and then on the other side like this. These are all the bones that I need for the face. I'm gonna continue on the shoulders. I like to have these bones so that I can make this sort of movement with the characters. I may also add more 3Dness by adding that those bones. So in theory it would go here, but it feels like it's too high given that we don't really have this part separate. So I could actually just have a bone here and therefore another bone as the parent around here. Not super correct, but this could be lower, this is not centered. It's because of the posture. Feels more correct like this, even though you have to remove Remember that this is a uh, 2D image and so the bones don't have to be like anatomically correct. They can also just refer to what you're seeing in front of you. 
which is a big difference <laughs> from using 3D instead. So I could have this lower, even though it's not really correct, and it would still work inside the spine because it's a 2D image. I'll add this so that then I can have it point here and have the arm anchored to the man. Here it's a bit easier. I have to imagine like a, a circle, go for the middle of that circle, and then I can have this. I could actually use a missing link in this case, I think. So instead of having this bone, I'm gonna skip it. I already explained the missing link technique in a video with the same title in the name. So I think you should watch that if you want in-depth explanation of how that works. So I'm gonna delete those bones and instead I'm gonna connect this all using just a mesh so that it connects to whatever is going to be controlling this area. For the same reason then I'm gonna delete these bones and I'm simply going to weight this part so it stays anchored to our character without having a bone at all. Just gonna have this so maybe it can rotate a little bit could even have one here then like this so it can rotate a little bit and this part is gonna stay connected then uh, i'll uh, at first uh, create all of the bones and then i'll make them neat okay i think i'm gonna start from here i'm going to use the same structure as the other i can also have something to control the arm there is no back hand now let's do some renaming We're done with the initial part where we add the skeleton. So now the second phase, very important, is the one where we create the mesh. In this case we're lucky because the characters are separated from the background. Here I have to select the image of the woman. Then I'm going to check mesh, edit mesh, and uh, uh, the first step with every mesh that is a bit more complex is that to define the outer hull. I could actually trace this part. Sometimes this makes it easier, sometimes it doesn't. I think I'm just gonna go and make one from scratch. Okay, so I will start from one of the corners. I'll just go around the body to separate this part. Then I'm going to create a vertex every time I expect these parts of the body to be able to bend and deform. Then I will go, I think, close to the hand. I want to have a bit more control around the hand, but I'm going to encapsulate very simply this area here. Then I'll go up. Here I am forced to add another vertex. I'll end this one where I expect this shape Okay, to be like this. Let's not dim it because otherwise I don't see anything. <laughs> I guess I'm forced to do this, although I don't like it very much because this serves no real uh, purpose. Then here there's this area that is supposed to be bending, following, etc. So I need a vertex where this ends. Then here I can have a straight line, except for the fact that there is a tiny bump. So it forces me, I can't just go up like this because I would cut some pixels. So I need to add a vertex like this. Here I'm gonna separate the neck from the rest. Here I can also have a straight line actually. Then here I'll just go around, not too detailed, just whatever I hit a corner. Okay, separating the neck. And again I go down the shoulder. This I think is where it ends. So I think I can go down like this. All right, this was the outer hull. Now I have to define the internal vertices. Let's start from the body because it's a tad easier. If you followed already the video where we talked about the basics of 2.5D, then you might remember that to uh, obtain a 2.5D effect, the trick consists, with our, like with our cube, to uh, outline, to separate the planes and outline when there's a division from light to dark to create that 3D effect. More or less we're gonna follow that principle here, so I'm going to separate parts. I separate this from the rest. Here I could also separate these parts. Then. Uh, I said that I want to be able to rot um, move around this, yeah, rotate it. Like this, I think, this is going to separate this area and here I need a straight edge to represent one side and the other side. Actually, if I look better at the shadows that I have here, okay, this is where the darker part is and this is the lighter part. If you're in doubt, always look at the image itself as the image will give you all the hints that you need to be able to do this. I could add a vertex here and make sure to connect this like this because it's separating again one side from another 
could potentially work. I usually also add another vertex here so that the arm is separated from the rest. I think this is gonna work. I could maybe add another one here but I'm not sure that I'm gonna use it. So for now I'll leave it simpler. Then for the chest part the separation from light to dark ends around here. Here again okay, here we have the top part of these. Could even add a vertex here. Okay, see how it wraps nicely around the body. And here I'm going to add a vertex to separate again light from dark. Let's also separate the neck from the rest. Okay, for the neck I like to add a little bit more detail because this part, actually this part, is not gonna rotate. It's gonna stay fixed. I think that actually the jewel is also not gonna move, so I'll move it slightly up. Ah, the difficult part, the face. What do we do with the face? My recommendation is first separate the parts and then we define them. So at first we need to separate the hair from the face and the face from the neck. Okay, let's start with the hair because it's a tad easier. So here a vertex, here another, here, here, here and here. And with that we separated the hairline. For the lower part, okay, that's a little bit difficult. You have to use the eyes of your imagination to be able to do this. So I think that the jaw is gonna end somewhere around here because it's logical, but I'm kind of winging it. I can't be certain. Okay, the earring, I think I'm gonna separate like this. Okay, for now, I'll keep it simple, I'll keep it like this. Once we separated this, for the hair, I recommend when something is curved to have like two, three sections. So uh, we're gonna create uh, a series of circles to define the roundness of the hair. And we kind of create them by prolonging some invisible lines, uh, straight lines uh, that wrap around the object like it's a globe chart. I'm going to add here some vertices to be able to define this. This I think should follow better. This too. Then here where there's the hairline. I think I'm gonna separate. This is a little hat. I'm gonna separate the hat from the rest so I can make it pop more in the front. And if I add four vertices around this part I'm gonna it's gonna be simpler to control it. So I feel like this should be connected this way. Yeah, the hat, I think it's like this. Here is where the braid ends. Here is where this part of the head also ends. This could potentially work. Maybe I need a couple of vertices like this and then to connect this like that, I'm not sure. I'm gonna leave it simpler for now and then I'm gonna fix the weights, uh, the vertex placement in case it's not right. And now um, the difficult part the face, which is not so difficult after all. The trick is, when in doubt, at first add the vertices at the sides of the features, so like this. So at the sides of the eyes, at the sides of imaginary eyebrows, this lady has the same eyebrow problem that I have, then at the sides of the mouth, in the middle of the mouth, at the sides here. Okay, more or less we cover the sides. Then everything that we have here we have to split into three more parts because the eyes are round like this and to simulate something that is round we need three sections so one i'll make it evident one two three sections okay so one two and three usually a short trick to get it right is to uh, enclose, encapsulate the iris. That usually works really nicely, especially with paintings when they have realistic proportions. So we do something like this. Voila. Okay, when we see something that should like this fold here, the fold should have a line, but it, the line goes in the opposite direction. We can click and drag to create the right flow of connection for the vertices so that these connect how we prefer them. For the eyebrows, I like to create sections like this that prolong, that continue these lines. So can you see the line that goes around this? Couple more. This part is shorter because of the perspective. So it can also have less vertices. Then, uh, look at these nice lines that we have. It's the eye socket. Thank you, Fabiano. And uh, we also do the same here. So here was very marked, which made it easy to identify. In this case, uh, we have to rely on where the rosy cheeks end and more or less at the same height as this to kind of imagine where it's supposed to be. And we also add another one here, okay, to complete this eye socket shape. 
I think around here. I, I should definitely separate this part so that the eye does not connect with the hair. For the nose, we sort of want to have the tip of the nose defined, let's say with four vertices, something like this, which usually looks nice. Then we can have a couple more vertices here to define the bridge of the nose. Then here, sometimes people have creases. Ah, this man has them, so it's darker here. And they usually it does not hurt to add. She's very calm. She, she does not have any line of expression. For this forehead, okay, with her, it's a tad harder to see, but okay, with him, it's a little bit easier. So see that there's usually the little, um, we can divide this in three sections, and then there's the first section here that ends around here, which is like um, one third of the entire height, where we want to create a belt of vertices, and then another one here. So basically, we divide the forehead into three parts vertically, continue the lines that we started here. So if I were to... Oh, here you can see that the light ends around where that part stops. I love classical paintings for this because they make it very evident. So I'll be creating here the vertices to continue those lines. When your character is front facing, you will have more or less the same number of vertices. When one side of the character is shorter, as I said earlier for the eyebrows, we may have less vertices. Since the vertices don't appear like underneath, there is not gonna be an extra image to see. We can leave it as it is. Okay, then here I'm going to continue this. I need to force this line. Uh, where is the middle? The middle is here. I could continue it this way. Okay, this may work. So we have three sections, one, two, three, and then vertically, more or less, also something here. I have one vertex here and then I don't have it here, but I think I'm gonna leave, even if I don't add that vertex. So for now, I'm gonna try not to add that. Okay, then let's define a bit better the lips. For the lips, I recommend to also mark the internal line because it's kind of going inside compared to the uh, lips that instead pout a little bit outside. So I'm going to add vertices down here to be able to do that. Then to have a natural uh, smiling person or not, it is also advisable to add a couple of vertices like this just so the characters can change expressions. Okay. All that's left to define is the cheeks, the cheeks and the chin. So for the chin, we continue these two lines. Mm, I think I'm gonna need another vertex here because there's the part that is attached to the face and the part that is more um, detached instead and that should be closer to us. And it looks like because of the tilt of the face, those two parts overlap a little bit. So I'm adding some two very close vertices for that reason. So I was saying about the chin, that we continue those lines, it may look like this. Let me force some orange lines so I have those nice parallel lines that I need. For the cheeks, okay, when the characters are old, it's very simple because we just follow the marks of age. So here, we see that there's this line, we have to interrupt it. Where do we interrupt it? Here, voila, perfect. And it follows the cheek lines very nicely. I'm gonna add another one here so that it also curves with it and it kind of follows the jaw shape. Then on the other side, I'm gonna use the same logic. There's this that connects with the end of the um, ear. I'm gonna interrupt this line like this. And then I add another one here at the end where there's the crease that ends. And um, this area should be more or less done. Okay, maybe I add another one here so it follows a little bit better. Then for the poofy parts of the cheeks. Okay, I'm gonna look at first at where the lightened area is. So it kind of ends like this, I think, because we have to understand how this is curving and the parts that reflect the lights and the parts that don't. It seems like this person has some parts that are kind of end here, kind of also con do this, and then maybe this is connected this way, but no, it feels like it's wrong. I think like I have to add a vertex like this completely 
complete this to follow the folds of the face. So I think I'm gonna end it this way. Also, notice how this is continuing these lines, these lines. Could have added like maybe, oh, no, nah, that's wrong. Yeah, this may work. Then here, I'm gonna have something similar. We also follow the variation from light to dark. Look at this. I think I'm gonna get this to match a little bit better with the lights. So here we have the part that is the darkest. Here it has a bit more light. We separate those planes. Then I'll be creating here at the end of this cheekbone. This perhaps like this it's enough. Notice how, how many sections are there for the cheek. One, two, Three. Okay, so that's gonna be my mesh for the face. Can you see the structure? Can you see how it kind of flows nicely? And where it is not flowing that nicely, we can adjust it a little bit. I think I like this way. Uh, until it flows nicely. Oh, this sort of has like a circle. Never noticed that. Cool. So, uh, you see more or less how this works. Um, now I am going to repeat the process on a more difficult angle, which is on the man. So meshes, edit mesh. Can we attempt tracing? Is tracing going to work? I am going to roll with it. I'm just gonna remove maybe a couple of vertices. Once again, let's start easy. We separate maybe the white part of the man. Then here we separate the neck okay, like this from the rest so that the character can move the head a little bit. Okay, that's fine. Maybe I'll just add a vertex here so I can better get only this area to move or maybe I don't know if it'd be like this no I'm gonna leave it as it is all right let's focus on the head higher difficulty because we see less of the details so we have to imagine them but we know the basics from the first version I'm going to create separated first these parts of the face and I think it is very not defined in this case so I'm just gonna follow the beard if you can call it a beard here mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna go with this the important part is that we separate the hair from the uh, face and we kind of did that let's do again the trick of at first we place the vertices at the sides of the facial features okay what do we do with the nose with the nose i recommend doing something like this where we separate the nose from the cheek you don't need to have the orange lines it's just for me so i can show you better how this is going to work okay so we have the part of the nose that is the closest to us which could probably okay be exactly where it starts changing from light to dark i think i'm gonna add one vertex here in the middle where it starts where the darker part here starts oh he's wearing glasses can you see the glasses you kind of have to imagine the glasses too but we're gonna use this to help us okay let's not cure this part i'm gonna do this to preserve it and i'm going to separate the eyebrows already in three parts okay here let's continue okay one two three one two three that's done for the eye, once again I split this going around <laughs> those four pixels that represent the eye. Remember that she had very deep eye sockets. In this case, we have a much smaller area. We're gonna follow where the light and dark ends. So always follow the drawing, it's like number one rule. Maybe I'll add another vertex here because this is like the peak of the nostril, <gasps> like this then we define the lips he is do you think he's smiling it kind of looks like he is i wonder what they're looking at maybe pictures of their dog or their daughter having a vacation somewhere or i don't know okay i'm maybe trying to skip this because it's couple of pixels and I don't think it's gonna add much. I'll aim these vertex at the end of this crease. Then, because this crease is so intense, I could even define it this way. See? So it's kind of separating the planes of the puffiness of the cheeks like this. Here we kind of continue these. I'm not sure it is worth to add stuff here, so I'll maybe go back and add more definition if it's needed, but for now I'll leave it as it is. I'll do that thing of marking the end. Ah, I already marked this. So in theory it should join around here. Probably I would split it around here. Okay, now I have to separate the area that is the closest to us. So one side of it, which may be around here. Oh, look, there's a tiny crease also here. It may end maybe around... Uh, I'm not sure this is complicated because I don't have much information. Okay, sometimes 
when I'm not sure about what is happening, I imagine the characters crying. And when they cry, they kind of also have the lines that go down and continue. And so, if this character was crying, where would he, his tears go down? Probably around here, I would say. You know what? I don't care. When I'm not sure, I'm just gonna... I'm, I'm gonna leave that there and then if it's not right i'm gonna fix it this is enough do i have to separate the cheek the the chin a little bit actually this is the jawline a little bit more maybe yes feels right to do that if it's not right we're gonna fix it okay then the very last thing is we need to create three sections one two three for the top of the head okay i'll continue from that very conveniently placed line to create the effect of 3dness on the hair okay i'm marking them so it's more evident for for you watching this and now let's look at also these mesh let's dim it i feel like i could have done a better job around here usually i get them at the same height but it's also following the shape of his face so i think it's also all right to have it this way now we're ready for phase three so here i have this mesh i'm gonna bind all of the bones that overlap this mesh and that are supposed to control this mesh so these 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 and all of them. I should also bind the root to anchor the bottom in place. Then I'm gonna do the same on here. Ah, oh, I did not create the mesh for these. I forgot. Let's do it now. Mesh, edit mesh, trace. Woohoo, I forgot one. I'm gonna accept it and then remove all the extra vertices that are not necessary, which are actually many. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to move these a lot. But I can still define this part so it has an angle like this. Then I'm gonna separate the hand parts. To have a 3D-ness effect, I should add here. But it's actually all dark, so maybe it's not necessary. Here so it can fold. Here it's useful to have this so it can stay attached uh, and rotate a little bit. And that could be it. I'll bind also this part all of the parts of the face all right so now they are bound i'm going to have some test animations they are not gonna have the 3d effect for now i'll um, select the weights tool okay the weights more or less were already automatically calculated i sort of wanted to anchor this part i may need to add a bone to control this side of uh, the painting i think i'm gonna add that bone okay, i'm gonna add it under the root here. I'll call this painting side. Makes perfect sense. I'm gonna bind this one here. Bind perfect. And also bind it. Bind here. One, two, three, four, and five. And save. I'll just reorganize a little bit the bones here so they have a more correct order. I recommend to start testing that all the parts of your rig work from the parent bones, all the respective parent bones, and then downwards until everything works. So yay, look at this. This already tells us that we cannot really move this character a lot because otherwise <laughs> the double hand that it had underneath is not gonna work. Let's change the weights a little bit in this area so that they are controlled by the body bone 100% and also here actually though if you remember we said that we wanted to anchor this to the painting and so what we need to do is to give it a hundred percent of the root so it stays in place actually i can give it a little bit of a stronger influence of the root here i'll, I'll give it at first a hundred percent and then a little bit more of the body to take out all the other weights this is the arm i can already get it to be influenced a hundred percent by the arm but if you remember what did we say? We said that we wanted this part anchored to this character in the front. So I can go back in and await it so it follows the shoulder or whatever we want. Maybe the shoulder, yeah. Okay, let's do the shoulder. I could even go crazy and uh, bind it to follow the base or something. But mm, I think that this should be behind. So it's not affecting, it's not visible if we move some of the parts. And I'm going to wait these four vertices here so they follow this pan shoulder here to get the effect really working i need to have maybe some in between weights something like this for now okay then we said that we wanted to also connect the arm 
So to connect the arm to the painting, I'm going to select all of the vertices that I had here, find the painting side, which was the first, and assign 100%. Now, mm, we can already do a little bit of the cool effect of pretending that this is 3D. So we have a part that is 100% and it kind of breaks the other part that we have here. When they overlap too much and it's difficult, I like to move my testing keyframe a little bit forward. Then I like to add for this same aspect by clicking on rotate here, another key. Okay, then I can go around here and see it squashed, but not as much. Okay, then the next thing that I'll do is go in the middle more or less of this animation, select I think these ones that are starting to change from one to the other and I'm going to assign a little bit of both. At first I can actually do a smoothing, no, I don't want those parts though. Then I'll go a little bit more forward and start influencing also the middle parts. Now the trick to get this to work and uh, fake the 3D-ness is to leave the middle part, the part of the line that crosses this, the part that is closer to us, to have stronger influence from the bone that is supposedly closer to us. So basically we give, we leave a little bit more influence of painting side, a stronger one here on the vertices in the middle and it's gonna look suddenly 3D. Okay, for this I think that it helps to have the animation going to really understand what is happening. Now it kind of doesn't look very good because here painting side for example is very strong. So we need instead to have a stronger influence of the part in the back. Okay, this is where the black magic starts to happen. We get these parts to work. Okay, here I can see that there's a line that crosses wrongly my mesh. I'm going to edit the mesh. Ah, as I thought. I can add just a little vertex like this, maybe another one here, just to be fancy. And then I have two more vertices that I can control to convey the shape of that painting. Something like this. Look at this. Okay, it was very easy to make it 3D, right? Because we just had to outline that part that I was explaining. Uh, here we make it more, here we give it stronger influence of the bone in the back, here a little bit more maybe. I like to have it moving because it makes it easier to understand uh, uh, the actual depth of some parts. I could add more vertices to define better also here the thumb, but if you imagine that this is sort of like the cube example that I was explaining to you other times, then it may also work like this. We could get a similar effect also on this side. So if we get these to have a stronger influence of the man, actually less influence of the man, so they follow more of the body, and this one in the middle, which is closer to us, to have more influence of the man. But I think that if this rotates, it needs to be a tad stronger like this, guys. So it's a tad closer. I'm not gonna be able to use this much of the rotation. If I were to change the background with a, with a more solid background, then this would work. For the shoulders, I like to have this full area here, which Spine attempted to guess and I think it failed. Uh, I'm gonna give it 100% of the shoulder bone. Here on the other side, I'm gonna give it 100% of the other shoulder bone like this. So clear out. Actually, I think I'm gonna, in general, prune some of the useless weights, anything that is influencing less than 5%, maybe 3%, okay, is gonna be deleted, so it's not causing problems anymore. I'm gonna get this whole area to be influenced, I think for now, to the body. Body, 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 where is the body? Okay, here. Then we said that we kind of wanted her to breathe. I think I'm gonna delete this sideways thing because it's not necessary anymore and maybe I'll make her breathe in that. So I'll move this, I don't know, up and down to simulate the breathing. Maybe like this. I don't know if it's gonna be realistic, I just need it to move a little bit to see what is happening and then I'm gonna assign to this okay, the breathing so it moves a little bit. Yeah, I don't think that's the perfect <laughs> movement to have it do. As long as it follows a little bit, I think it's okay. I think that's okay. I'm gonna move it a, a lot less, but I needed to see it uh, moving a bit more to understand what was happening. Next, 
let's rotate a little bit the neck. <laughs> I love doing this. Okay, so for this, as you can see, this whole area should not be following the body, but it should follow what? Are we assigning neck weights? The neck is only there to help us rotate parts. I'm gonna select all of these vertices and assign to them. At first, the head influence, head influence like this. And then actually for the face parts, we're gonna assign a neutral weight which is going to be, um, by the way, I'm holding control to pause the animation and select parts at the same time, command on Mac. I'm going to assign a 100% of the woman face holder, so that then when it rotates, it's gonna rotate as one block. So for the body, did I weight this to the root? I did not. Okay, let's also bind the root, and I'm going to assign for this area at the bottom, 100% of the root, because I need it to stay attached. I want the body to influence that and I think that the body is gonna also influence this or maybe the shoulder the shoulder is going to influence that to actually know if I'm doing right or wrong I should test this I'll move it oh look at that it's a gummy painting the painting got automatically weighted like that <laughs> I should have tested the shoulders. The shoulders still need some testing. <laughs> oh, that's so good. I'm going to add the missing keys here and at the end. And I'm gonna make him do the same weird movements. Don't you love the testing animations that I work on? Look at these. It's so natural. It's what every human being would be doing if they were in this situation. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Mr. Gottfried, for doing this to your painting, but I promise that this is the ugly face before it turns pretty again. I'll be fixing the weights here. Luckily, this is not too hard. I'll be selecting here the shoulders. I think this shoulder needs to move a little bit more with this area. Then here we see that the arms are enlarging when the parts move. I think that that is caused by the fact that it should be influenced a bit more, perhaps by the woman arm. Now it is again a bit more natural. Uh, what about this? It needs to be the other woman arm. Okay, and here we see that there's a little bit of a problem in the flow of the vertices for this mesh. They are connecting the wrong thing, clearly. Let's go back in. Let's change the mesh structure. How can we fix this? Like this, I think. We just got rid of that. Yeah, I think this is gonna work. Let's go over to him. Let's attach this to the root, I think, at first. Should not detach that much. Or maybe the man should have called his man body. When he is raising his beautiful shoulders, I think I'm gonna give this a little bit more influence of the man. I'm, I'm just gonna do this. Man at first. Man shoulder for this part, for sure. This whole area here needs to be influenced by the head. And then the face area for which I'm going to zoom in, let's pause this, only basically the li literally the face, so like this until the chin, this part should be influenced the face holder. And with this preparation is complete for the more difficult parts. I, I feel like the rotation movement here is actually pretty good. I feel like I don't need to change much in this area. How do we get the painting to not be gummy? It's just another cube. Okay, these parts in here should have some different weights, but also this part should be different. This also should be more in the back and this should be closer. So that is the part most in the back, then it should be like this. Here I'm gonna leave it attached. That's my extreme. Then my other extreme is actually the part that is the closest to us which by necessity needs to be the hand so this one is the closest to us and needs to be 100% on the hand then by that logic this needs to have also more hand influence but a little bit less well, it looks a lot more solid but I destroyed the hand in the process so I think I need to change the rig a little bit 
So I think I need to add a control for the uh, painting itself and uh, just have a missing link here. So I'm going to enable bones and images compensation and I'm going to change the structure to be able to control the perspective of this part. I'm going to switch this instead of having a length to a bone that is an all bone and I'm going to rotate it so it's at zero degrees of rotation. So instead of being a child of the man arm, it's going to be a child of the root. So basically what I did was uh, move some bones around. You just move them and then you start trying to change your weights. Okay, you see that they move. That is because, as I explained in the previous session, our mesh remembers when we click the bind button what the position of the bones were. So we have to update what the mesh remembers by pressing the update button. It's not doing the crazy stuff anymore, which is great. What is that? This? Okay, I'm just gonna delete it. They have less and less controls, but that makes it more powerful, actually. Translate this a little bit to get the 3D effect. And that will be my anchor. First, I assign these weights and then I'm going to assign more of the man arm. I'm going to use that trick again where I do at first this and then the middle part to make it seem like it's 3D. I'm going to assign more of painting front. And here for sure it needs to have less of that influence like this. So it's tad nicer. Okay, I think that I need to define a little bit better here the hand because it feels super flat. And I also think that I don't need as many vertices on the painting itself because they are just distracting me. So I'm gonna improve a little bit on this by removing the weights here. Also these, unnecessary. Okay, the simpler it is, the easier it is for you to control. Uh, and then I'm going to add a couple of vertices here to define this area. Maybe just two. Oh, they are married. I don't know why I act so shocked. Of course they were at that time. See how flat it felt in here? That, it, that was because we only defined two sides. Now I'm gonna change this structure so that we have instead three sides. So added the mesh and I'm gonna modify this so it's more on the side like this here too. And I'm gonna add one, two here, here. Notice that I'm placing it following the fold so it's gonna deform nicely. Here I can force the geometry this way. Now I'm gonna get them to have similar weights. Here I want it a bit more in front. I think these parts need to go more in the back. Yeah, so it's more curved. A little bit more in the back. And suddenly, see, just by adding one more side that it's looking more at us, we get more of that roundness going and it looks a little bit more believable. Keep it together. Maybe I can assign more of the painting side or in any case it should have less of men up. Okay, you know, it definitely needs all three of the weights, which makes uh, getting the weights right for these a little bit more difficult than usual. We kind of have to identify all of them. That this part here deforms, it detaches too much from the painting, so I add more of the back of the painting to it. Then here, to avoid parts detaching, I'm going to add in a block painting side. Probably it could have, in general, less man arm up influence. I want to push these parts more in the front or in the back, I could do this. And then actually add the man arm up but only a little bit so they don't deform too much that part. Okay, I guess that the problem is that uh, this part is touching the painting and so it's correct to have it this way. I need one more vertex for this to work too, maybe. Follow the painting better. Okay, so this way I can get this part to be more in the front or the back, depending on what I choose. Yeah. Okay, I only have one part that liquefies a little bit. This, the added mesh. We'll get this to be very close. I hope that this is enough. I want to make sure that these are separated. Okay, let's see now. So, do I need this vertex? Maybe I don't. Let's delete it. Okay, then it should be easier to just remove this. Somewhere along the way, I wrecked the weights. Okay. I did something that I shouldn't have done here. Maybe this is too strong. Maybe this is too strong too. This needs more man arm. Feels like this should be more in the front. And this actually too. And this too. This is more in the front. All of these from these crazy movements that they are doing. I think as the very last thing, I'm going to fix this arm that is detaching from the painting. I'm gonna lock woman arm up so it stays the same. And then I'm gonna give it like a block influence here 
of painting front and now it is attached and if i get this i also get a little bit of the perspective and the part where it touches the most i'm gonna adjust the weights okay now it's good now we attach their hands to a painting they are kind of fighting for that painting okay this is the end of today's session next time i will be focusing on just the faces but at least we got the meshes done in this stream and uh, we also got some very interesting perspective effects on their arms something that i would have never imagined that i actually uh, would have done on stream they are fighting for this painting so much with some void eyes staring at us i hope you enjoyed this session see you again next tuesday bye bye